Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, B. Benaderet, Hans Conried, Pat McGee, and Doris Singleton, Harry Lubin, the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. The coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand at any price. Yes, Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, it's Thanksgiving morning as we look in at the Burns home, but that's not the subject of discussion between George and Gracie. It seems that George is going to be best man at a friend's wedding, and he's telling Gracie all about it. It's Bob Webster who's getting married, Gracie. Uh, Bob Webster? Yeah, you remember the Webster boys. We had them here for dinner one night. Yeah. Oh, yes. Bob is the one who spilled the gravy on the table cross brother. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Well, um, Bob is finally going to settle down and marry himself a wife. Well, wouldn't it be better if he married a single girl? <laughs> She is. Uh, she is single. Oh, good. Do I know her? I don't think so. She's marrying Carol. Oh, I thought she was marrying Bob Webster. <laughs> Who's Bob marrying? Marrying Carol. He's marrying the same person? No, no, no. Look. Oh, uh, then who's he marrying? Marrying Carol. Well, George, for a best man, you certainly are mixed up. Uh, Gracie, this Marion is spelled M-A-R-I-A-N. Now, do you understand? Well, of course I understand. I'm no Dembo. Good, good. <laughs> the bride is Marion Carroll. All right. Now, who is the groom, Marion? <laughs> oh, nuts. Oh, nuts. It's an Irish girl, huh? <laughs> yes, uh, Molly O'Nuts. <laughs> Well, anyway, this is the first time I've, uh, I've ever been a uh, best man. Uh, how do you think I should dress? Oh, the usual way. First, put on your underwear. Then... <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that. I mean, how should I dress at the wedding? Oh, I wouldn't. I dress here. <laughs> well, forget the whole thing. I'll go to the wedding in a, in a, in a tuxedo. Well, it's only a couple of blocks. Why don't you walk? <laughs> Well, a tuxedo is that funny black suit I wore when we got married. Oh, have you still got that suit? Well, sure. You must owe a lot of rent on it by now. <laughs> About $30,000. Yeah. Well, now I'm going out to borrow some studs. But first, I better put this wedding ring where, where it'll be safe. <gasps> oh, what a beautiful ring. It's set with diamonds and everything. Yeah, Bob was so nervous, he asked me to keep it. Oh, well, let me wear it until the wedding tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. You might lose it. Besides, uh, you've got a wedding ring. Oh, but this one is so beautiful. Gracie, a wedding ring is just a symbol. It doesn't matter if it's solid brass. Well, I know. I love my ring. <laughs> but this one is so exquisite. I won't lose it. I've never lost mine. Honey, this ring cost $1,000. Yours cost $5. No, George, no. My ring cost $10. No, I paid $5 for it. Are you sure? Well, certainly. Well, then you forgot to give me my change. <laughs> I'll owe it to you. And Bob's ring goes right in this drawer. And I want it to stay there. Now I've got to find some tuxedo studs and get the suit pressed. Oh, there's Blanche Morton at the back door. Come in, Blanche. Hello, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, Same thank you, Blanche. you, Blanche. Say, Gracie, yes. I'm having a bunch in for dinner. I wonder if I could borrow that wonderful little pot of yours that cooks things so fast. Well, certainly. Go along with it, George. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I mean your presto cooker. Oh, that. 
that? Oh, sure. I'll be finished with it in a few minutes. Say, Blanche, has Harry got some tuxedo studs I can borrow? Oh, I think so. I'm, uh, I'm best man at Bob Webster's wedding tomorrow. Really? Who's Bob Marion? Marion Carroll. No, no, George, you're mixed up again. <laughs> He's marrying Molly O'Nut. <laughs> well, let's not get back into that routine. I'll run over and get the studs from Harry. How's your Thanksgiving dinner coming along, Grace? Oh, just fine, Blanche. I've made pumpkin pie, chestnut dressing, and, and see, I, I've got the oven turned to 350 degrees. That's perfect for browning a turkey. Hmm? That reminds me, I better look at it. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. You burnt the turkey? No, I forgot to get one. <laughs> And I'll bet George is so hungry he could eat the table leaves. Well, quick, put him in the oven. <laughs> I was only kidding, Gracie. You gotta have a turkey. But Blanche, the markets are all closed. How will I get one? Drive out to the country and buy one from a farmer. Hey, that's a good idea. Sure. What do you want? A tom turkey? Tom turkey, Sam turkey. Who cares what? <laughs> I'm going to feed them to George, not introduce them. Uh, you help yourself to the cooker. I'll head for the country. All right. Oh, I wonder if I dare... Yes, I'll wear it. Blanche, isn't this a beautiful wedding ring? Oh, it's magnificent. Oh, you lucky girl. Now, it's not mine. It belongs to a girl Bob Webster's got to marry. Oh, nuts. Yeah, that's right. Molly. <laughs> George told me not to wear it, but I'm going to anyhow. Gracie, are you the kind of wife who disobeys her husband? Well, sure, I'm normal. <laughs> See you later, Blanche. <laughs> Well, there they are, ma'am. I've got about 20 turkeys left. I'm selling them for 60 cents a pound. Well, I guess I'll have to pay it. My husband insists on turkey, but it does seem high. It costs money to feed an old gobbler. Yes, especially when he insists on turkey. <laughs> Want me to pick one out for you? Oh, no, no. You might try to fool me. I'll pick them out myself. I'm an expert. I know all about turkeys from their manes to their withers. Yeah, I can tell you're an expert, all right. See one you want? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see one I don't want. That turkey nearest the fence. It's got flat feet. <laughs> yep. Besides, it's a duck. <laughs> well, I want a turkey. <laughs> oh, oh. There's a cute little baby one. He'll be a fine bird when he grows up. He's milk-fed. Oh, now there you go, trying to fool me. That little turkey couldn't be milk-fed. He's too short to reach a cow's faucet. <laughs> I'm sorry I tried to fool you. Well, I better pick out a turkey. Eeny, meeny, miny... Oh, oh, my goodness. What's the matter? The wedding ring, it's gone. It must have slipped off my finger here in the turkey pen. Yeah, I don't see nothing of it. Oh, if that ring's gone, my husband will murder me. It's a thousand-dollar wedding ring. I'll bet I know what's happened. One of them turkeys took it. Well, quick, which one of them is planning to get married? <laughs> Lady, I mean one of them turkeys swallowed it. Oh, that's terrible. You see, the, the ring isn't mine. My husband had it for another woman. My, you Hollywood folks. <laughs> oh, quick, get it out of the turkey. Well, I don't know which one swallowed it. Oh, I wish it had been my wedding ring. We'd know the turkey in a minute. He'd turn green. <laughs> oh, but you, you, you've got to get it. Well, I can't kill all them turkeys. It's too late to sell them. To kill them, just turn them inside out and shake them. <laughs> Lady, the only way to find that ring is for you to buy these turkeys and let me kill them. No, sir. I can't let 19 innocent turkeys die just because one of them is a thief. I'll take them home with me and find the guilty one somehow. Well, just as you say, ma'am. But how will I get all these turkeys to town? I'll truck them in. Well, that's a long way to dance. <laughs> Well, then you, you look healthy. Here's my address. 
Put them on the back porch. Gracie, I'm home. Where are you? Huh. Guess she's out in the kitchen. Hey, Gracie, I got the tuxedo studs. No, not here either. Maybe she's on the back porch. (laughs) Holy smoke. Her mother is here for Thanksgiving. (laughs) No, it couldn't be her mother. She talks louder than that. I'll have another look. Who's out there? Gracie, come in the house. I want to talk to you. <laughs> what goes on here? There must be a dozen turkeys on our back wall. Oh, now, don't exaggerate, dear. There are only 20. <laughs> well, why in the world did you buy 20 turkeys? Uh, why? Yeah, why? Uh, well, um, you see, when I left the farm, I only had two turkeys, but they happened to be male and female, and, well, you know turkeys. <laughs> now we've got 20. That's rabbits. <laughs> no, they're turkeys. Look again. I mean, turkeys can't multiply like rabbits. Turkeys lay eggs. Well, there's something rabbits can't do, so they're even. <laughs> Stop being silly. Why did you buy 20 turkeys? Oh, all right. I guess I'll have to tell you the truth. Well, I should hope so. It's enough turkeys to fill the Salvation Army baskets. Uh, you, you guessed it. Huh? Uh, that's, uh, those turkeys are for the Salvation Army. They were donated by a, a, a kind farmer. Oh, well, thanks for telling the truth. Well, thanks for thinking of it. <laughs> Excuse me, dear. I have to run out and borrow some fishing tackle. You going fishing? Where? Oh, if I told you, you'd say I was crazy. I'll take a chance. Where are you going fishing? Inside those turkeys. You're crazy. Uh, see, I told you. But, Gracie... Goodbye, dear. Oh, what a little screwball. Well, I'll put a stop to this foolishness. I'll call the Salvation Army and tell them to come and pick up their turkeys. What? You let the Salvation Army take those turkeys? Certainly. They have to dress them and send them out. They may have to dress 19 of them, but one of those turkeys can afford the best tailor in town. (laughs) What? I'll see you later, dear. What are you talking? Uh, is, uh, is this the Salvation Army headquarters? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you still have the turkeys you got from Mr. Burns? Why, yes. <gasps> oh, thank goodness. He wants them back right away. You mean he's an Indian giver? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. He, uh, he gave you the turkeys by mistake. He, he meant to give you Indians. Huh? Well, you see, my husband was too proud to tell you, but our children are starving, and that's why we've got to have those turkeys back. All 20 of them? Yes. But Mrs. Burns, 20 turkeys will feed 200 children. So, four of my kids will go hungry. (laughs) It's impossible for a woman to have 204 children. Well, I had them the easy way. A hundred and two sets of twins. (laughs) A hundred and two sets of twins. Well, my husband makes bookends, and it's affected his whole life. (laughs) Mrs. Burns, I'm afraid this is unbelievable. You don't believe my husband makes bookends, huh? I don't believe any of them. Oh, well, all right, then I'll tell you the truth. One of those turkeys has a thousand-dollar ring inside of it. I'm afraid you're mistaken, no ring was found when those turkeys were cleaned. Well, it must have been there. What cleaner did you send them to? We cleaned them ourselves, and there was no ring in... Wait a moment. There was a baby turkey in the flock, too small to kill. He's here in the back room. Maybe he swallowed the ring. Oh, oh that cute little baby. Oh, that baby couldn't be a juvenile delinquent. I'm sure he didn't swallow the ring. 
<laughs> Sounds like I was wrong. Shall we kill him and recover the ring? Oh, no, no. He's just a baby, and an orphan, too. You've already killed his mother and father and all his aunts and uncles. Oh, don't you worry, little turkey. Gracie will protect you. I'll take him home with me. But, Mrs. Burns, that turkey has a $1,000 ring inside of him. How will you get it? Well, I'll think of something. Come on, you little fort knox with feathers. <laughs> The hills of home, friendly American hills that today embrace a grateful nation, offering thanks for bountiful crops and rich harvests. Yes, on this most traditional of all American holidays, happy families are gathered at home, celebrating this Thanksgiving in feasting and good cheer, enjoying the warm fellowship and generous hospitality that make this day one of the favorite holidays of the year. And the folks who make Maxwell House coffee are happy indeed that their coffee, America's favorite brand, is such a familiar part of this Thanksgiving tradition. And they earnestly hope that their unceasing efforts to bring you the very best in rich, satisfying coffee-drinking goodness will continue to add to your enjoyment of Thanksgiving and every day in the year. I told you not to touch that ring. Now it's inside this silly turkey. Oh, please, George. He didn't know what he was doing. He's just a baby, an orphan. Orphan schmorphin. <laughs> gonna chop his head off, cut him open, and take him apart. But, George, he might not recover from a thing like that. <laughs> so he doesn't recover. Now give him here. No, no, no. Now wait. Wait. <laughs> George, we're not absolutely positive he swallowed the ring. Let's make sure before we do anything. How? Well, uh, uh, let's take him to a doctor and have him x-rayed. I'm not going to a doctor's office just to have a turkey x-rayed. Well, all right. While we're there, he can take out your appendix. <laughs> now give me the turkey. No, George, no. You may be hurting an innocent baby. We'll, we'll take him to the doctor and have him x-rayed. Oh, no, we won't. Oh, yes, we will. Oh, no, we won't. Here's the doctor's office, George. Uh, you, you stay in here in the waiting room with the turkey. I'll go see if the doctor's busy. Make it snappy. <laughs> oh, quiet. <laughs> Come in. Uh, are you the doctor? Yes, I'm sorry my receptionist isn't here today, but I always come to the office on Thanksgiving. Do a tremendous bicarbonate business. <laughs> well, um, I want you to take an x-ray. Very well. Step behind that screen and remove your clothes, please. All right, doctor, but can I peek over the screen while you x-ray the patient? You're not the patient. Oh, no, no. My husband has him outside. Oh, we think he swallowed a ring. Oh, a baby. <laughs> yes, yes. He's only about two weeks old. Is he in any pain? Oh, no, no. He's very lively. On the way here, he jumped out of the car. My husband chased him for a block. <laughs> and he's only two weeks old? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but very agile. We finally caught him on top of the mailbox. 
This promises to be a remarkable case. <laughs> uh, how did he happen to swallow this ring? Well, the, uh, the ring fell on the ground, and I think he ate it by mistake when he snapped at a grasshopper. <laughs> you allow him to eat grasshoppers? What kind of a mother are you? Oh, I'm not his mother. He's an orphan. His mother and father were killed by the Salvation Army. <laughs> I'm a bit confused. Suppose you just bring the patient in. All right. I I hope you can take the x-ray through his feathers. (laughs) The baby has feathers? Well, certainly all turkeys do. The patient is a turkey? Yes. Now I'll bring him in for x-ray. Madam, I am not a veterinarian. Well, who cares if you eat meat? Just x-ray the I'll make a bargain with you. I'll x-ray your turkey if you'll will your brain to medical science. <laughs> All right, if you can't get Einstein. <laughs> Imagine you thinking the turkey was a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I should have realized that a two-week-old baby wouldn't snap a dress off. <laughs> well, of course not. My brother Willie didn't start until he was a grown man. <laughs> For this, I open my office. <laughs> oh, all right, George. Bring the turkey in. There he is, Doctor. Gosh, I feel silly. You must think I'm the world's prize idiot. No, there's already been a winner. <laughs> <laughs> and now, quiet, baby. You're going to be x-rayed to see if you swallow the ring. I'll just put him behind the fluoroscope here. Oh, my goodness. I don't see the ring, but he certainly has swallowed a lot of bones. You are looking at his skeleton. (laughs) Wait, I see it. The ring is in his esophagus. Oh, now, Doctor, I'm over 21. You can play stomach in front of me. (laughs) It's not in the bird's stomach. It's lodged halfway down its throat. Can we, uh, can we get it without killing him? Not unless he coughs it up. And turkeys rarely cough. Then I'll have to kill him. Come on, Gracie. Oh, no, no, George, please. Give him a chance. But suppose he never coughs up the ring. I'll have to cough up a thousand dollars. Oh, I thought you kept your money in the bank. (laughs) Come on. Come on, George. Blow some more smoke in the turkey's face. It'll make him cough. This is silly. Well, try once more. A great big puff. (coughs) Ah, there he coughed. He didn't cough. I coughed. Well, why? You didn't swallow the ring. (laughs) I swallowed some smoke. Oh. Well, we don't need that. You can keep it. (laughs) Well, thanks. Come in. Well, hi, Burnses. What's doing? Oh, hello, Bill. George is blowing smoke at the turkey. George, you have to kill it before you smoke it. (laughs) I'm not smoking the turkey. Now, he's smoking a cigar. (laughs) I'm trying to get a wedding ring out of this turkey. Well, George, I don't think you two will be happy together. (laughs) Uh, Bill. But if you do make a go of it, I hope your kids look like the turkey. (laughs) If you'll be quiet a minute, I'll explain this thing. Okay. It's a fascinating story. You see, there's a big wedding tomorrow, and I've been picked as the best man. Well, right away, it's fascinating. (laughs) (laughs) Relax, Scott. Bob Webster is getting married, and he gave me a wedding ring to keep from him. Bob Webster, huh? Who's he marrying? Marion Carroll. Oh, Judge, you still haven't got it straight. He's marrying that Irish girl. Oh, quiet. I thought it was so nuts. <laughs> well, anyway, Bill, the ring cost $1,000. Gracie dropped it, and this turkey swallowed it. And now George wants to kill the little defenseless turkey. How can we stop him, Bill? Well, that's easy. Give the poor, miserable little creature a cup of Maxwell House coffee. 
The turkey? No, jars. Oh. The rich, mellow, good-to-the-last-drop flavor of Maxwell House will put him in such a happy mood that he won't want to kill the turkey. Then he'll go out into the world with a smile on his handsome face, and you'll be proud to be seen with him. George. No, the turkey. <laughs> oh, you'll be proud of George, too, because the roaster fresh goodness of Maxwell House will warm his heart and keep him from harming that innocent bird. Then your little pet can waddle around the house, and you can feed him and care for him all his life. The turkey. Turkey. No, No, George. (laughs) Just see that he gets plenty of Maxwell House coffee. It's America's favorite, a blend of superb Latin American coffees radiantly roasted to flavor perfection. And I know he'll be glad to hear me say that. George? No, the sponsor. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Switch. Yes. I see. (laughs) Well, I've heard enough of this. I want that ring, and it's just too bad for this turkey. I'm going to take the axe and let him have it. Oh, don't let him have it, George. He'll beat your brains out. (laughs) I'm going out and sharpen the axe. And if that turkey hasn't coughed up that ring in 30 minutes, he's through. Oh, I wish I had never seen Molly O'Quiet's wedding ring. Gracie, her name is Marion Carroll, and she's a very sweet girl. I know her. You mean she's tender-hearted? Oh, yeah. She cried like a baby when she found out she couldn't marry me. Oh. Yeah. Well, then I think I can save this turkey. Call her and get her over here right away. <laughs> situation, Marion. Your ring is inside this darling little turkey, and I know you wouldn't want him killed. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Burns, but I've got to have my wedding ring. Well, you can have it, but the turkey goes with it. Well, suppose people want to see the ring. Show them an (laughs) x-ray. But I can't get married without a ring. Oh, sure you can. Just change the ceremony a little bit. The groom says, with this turkey, I be (laughs) wed. Now, look, I've got to have my wedding ring. I can't go on a honeymoon without it. So the turkey goes with you. He'll make a wonderful chaperone. Well, now, why would I need a chaperone on my honeymoon? Well, husbands get awfully fresh. (laughs) George even tried to kiss me. (laughs) Oh, Mrs. Burns, I'd be embarrassed taking a turkey on my honeymoon. Well, then wrap it up in a blanket and say it's your baby. (laughs) I, uh, I don't believe that would save embarrassment. Well, don't forget the turkey might cough up the ring. Well, what would make a turkey cough? Well, now, look, get this picture. The three of you are on your honeymoon. The turkey has been out for a walk, and he comes back unexpectedly and catches you and your husband holding hands. Naturally, he wants to let you know he's there, so he gives a little cough. (laughs) Bingo, out pops the ring. Mrs. Burns, I've heard enough. Oh, really convinced you, huh? No. I'm being married in a few hours, and I want my ring, turkey or no turkey. Well, look, Marion, I'll, I'll make a bargain with you. Spare this turkey's life, and I'll see that you get the thrill supreme at your wedding. What's that? My husband will sing. His romantic voice is perfect for a wedding. But I... When George sings, people think they're at a wedding whether they are or not. The minute he opens his mouth, they start throwing old shoes. Oh, (laughs) Really, Mr. Burns? Well, Gracie, time's up. I've come for the turkey. Hello, Mr. Burns. Oh, hello, Marion. Uh, George, Marion wants you to sing at her wedding. Uh, give her a sample of your orange blossom baritone. Oh, but Mr. Burns, nah, I... Now, now, Marion, I'll be glad to do it. Get a load of this. I love you truly, truly dear. Oh. Lo- <laughs> Life with its sorrow. Oh. <laughs> Life with its tears. Oh, Do I, do I get the job? Yes, dear. Anytime a turkey swallows a wedding ring, we'll call on you. Well, I'm a success. <laughs> Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.